my dear students welcome back ninth class in my previous video i have discussed with the i have started with new chapter that is force and laws of motion in that i have uh, discussed about the first law of motion and what is inertia and the examples related to that first yes first law now today i'll continue with second law of motion that is newton's second law and how we can relate the second law with the force force how we can measure the force that we are going to yes get through mathematical derivation that is how the force can be derived and how it can be measurable clear now in my pre first law i have discussed about inertia what is inertia student it is an ability of a object it is an ability of an object or tendency of an object to be in the state of rest or in the state of motion so on what factor the inertia depends it depends upon the mass and force greater the mass greater the inertia means if body if mass of the body is greater then it has more tendency to be in that state within the state of rest or of motion and it also depends upon the force clear so one more question comes on what factor the inertia depends it depends upon mass and force clear now today i am going to discuss second law now what is second law before i start with second law let me explain another term that is momentum what is momentum let's start student come come now what is momentum student suppose this is a boy play these two boys are playing with the ball clear now this ball is applying force on this ball right now when he is applying force get the force yes get the inertia of motion and the momentum now see what happens when he is applying force on this ball now this ball starts with a velocity that is initial velocity u initial velocity in motion you have studied about that initial velocity is small u and final velocity is small v now here the boy throws a ball and this ball has its own mass and moves with initial velocity right student and with this when the ball is moving along with its mass and with the initial velocity and from here to here ball reaches to the final position that is along with its mass that is m into final velocity yes student and this boy catches that ball so when the ball is moving moving position i am telling you when the ball is moving from its initial velocity to the final velocity with some force is applied on it then this is known as momentum this is known as momentum which is represented by small p which is represented by small p then what is momentum it is the product of mass and velocity product of mass and velocity but here why i am saying initial and final because the ball starts with initial velocity and it reaches to the final velocity so here because we have to derive this that is why i am concerning about initial velocity and final velocity otherwise the product of mass and velocity that is if we v minus u yes it's the velocity only clear final minus initial velocity we get the total velocity clear now see how will we derive this how the momentum will help us to derive force that how we can get the equation of force which can be measurable how much force is applied by this boy to yes to this object or how much force is applied by the boy on a ball clear again i am repeating one boy is standing here throwing a ball with some force obviously unbalanced force if he is applying balance it will not move unbalanced force and when he is throwing the ball is moving from this position to this position when it starts from here initial velocity the ball starts along with its own mass along with its own mass that is m into u and when it reaches here to the final velocity along with its mass and then the momentum will be final so this is the final momentum and this is the initial momentum and from here to here it needs some time 
need some time means it has covered some time some time is there that it starts from here and reaches there in some time taken so what second law says yes student what the second law says according to second law the rate of change of momentum what is the change of momentum that is for initial velocity to final velocity and rate obviously time time so rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force applied on an object towards the direction of a force yes towards the or in the direction of the force now see how will i explain this about wait yes now if i say momentum is equal to p is equal to m into v this is momentum now in the f what the law says f is directly proportional means directly proportional to the change of momentum greater the force greater the momentum lesser the force lesser the momentum momentum is ball will move slowly with that the velocity is slow see momentum and the ball is going this is the ball is yes gaining this momentum along with mass and velocity this is known as momentum the boy is not having he is he only applied the force momentum is on the ball momentum is gained by the ball see f is change of momentum that means if i am talking about p2 minus p1 upon t this is the rate of change of momentum final momentum minus initial momentum if i say p2 is equal to yes student m into v and p1 is equal to mass into initial velocity right so we can also write this like that write like this that is p2 is equal to mv minus mu minus m into u that is initial momentum upon t rate of change of momentum instead of writing momentum that is p i have opened this that is mass into final velocity which is p2 minus mass into initial velocity now force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum if i continue again f is directly proportional to m common and if i say v minus u upon t clear student and we know that acceleration is equal to v minus u upon t that is rate of change of velocity is known as acceleration so here instead of f is directly proportional to m into a correct student instead of writing this i can also write this acceleration so if instead of proportionality if the proportionality constant is equal to k and k is equal to 1 so this k is proportionality constant whenever there is proportional there is always constant is there so if i say is equal to k into m into a and if k is equal to 1 then f is equal to m into acceleration see student this is how we can find the formula for force that is mass into acceleration and acceleration is equal to f upon m this is again we have just derived from here clear very important very important student this is the second law which measures the force which measures the force and that measurable formula which we got is equal to f is equal to mass into acceleration i am repeating again we know that this we are relating it with the momentum and that is the second law that is change of rate of change of momentum this is the rate time change of momentum that is p2 minus p1 so force is directly proportional so what the second law says the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the unbalanced force applied to an object to the direction of the force wherever the force is to that direction the body will move okay and p2 that is the final momentum m into v 
V final velocity and P1 is equal to M into U that is initial mass into initial velocity because momentum is equal to mass into velocity. Yes, upon T, V minus U upon T, M common. So, M into V know that acceleration is equal to rate of change of velocity. So, instead of writing this, we can write acceleration over here. And proportionality constant that is K is equal to is equal to M into A. So, if K is 1, then F is equal to M into A. Clear student? So, first law defines the force and second law measures the force. That is, force is equal to mass into acceleration. So, what is then 1 Newton? What is the unit of force then? What is the unit of force? If I say F is equal to M into A, then mass is kg. And yes, student, what is the unit of acceleration? Meter per second square. Meter per second. So, kg meter per second square or F, we can call it as 1 Newton. 1 Newton. So, mostly we used to write Newton. Clear? One more question again. What is 1 Newton? 1 Newton is the force applied on an object of 1 kg that produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square. What is 1 Newton? When the force applied on mass of, on an object with the mass of 1 kg which produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square. Then it is known as Newton. Clear? Now, Next is, what is the unit of momentum? Momentum, if I say P is equal to M into V. So, kg into, yes, meter per second. Meter per second. Here, kg meter per second square. Here, kg or you can say dot meter per second. Clear? Question. See, name the physical quantity that has an unit of kg meter per second. Momentum. Name the physical quantity which has the unit of kg meter per second square. Yes, student? Force. Clear? So, this is how we can do. Now, if I go with the numerical, that means we have two formulas over here. That is, F is equal to M into A and Yes, P is equal to M into V. Any one of the quantities, uh, two quantity will be given and the third one you have to find. Suppose if acceleration given 2 meter per second square and mass given 4 kg. So, what is the force? M into A. And if A is not given, then definitely the V, v U and T will be given. So, instead of writing this, F is equal to M into V minus U upon T, you can solve this. You can solve also. Force like this. Clear? So, yes, this formula instead of A, you can also write this and this is how you can find the force also. Here again the same thing, M into V, V is equal to U plus AT. Yes, so V is equal to U plus AT, you can find U if it is given in the numerical. Otherwise, if it is direct, then you will get two, yes, two variations will be there. That is, two quantities will be there measurable and the third quantity you have to find. If A you have to find and force is given, so A is equal to F upon M. F upon M. Clear, student? Clear? Now, let's start with examples of related to second law example related to second law again i'm repeating second law the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the unbalanced force applied on an object in the direction of force yes now question why the cricketer or while catching a ball yes pulls his hand backward yes today why the cricketer while catching a ball, player lowers its hand, lowers his hand. Why? So that he will decrease the momentum because ball is coming with the speed. So he will decrease the momentum, speed and has its own mass. So ball is coming with very high momentum. So when he is pulling his hand back, the momentum decreases to zero and Pulls back means he's increasing the time. When he's increasing the time, the momentum gradually lowers and becomes zero. And he may not get hurt. Yes, today. So, that is why the cricketer pulls his hand 
Yes, lowers his hand. Next is why the automobiles are provided with shockers. You know, shocker that is a spring type thing. Now, when he is on automobile, gets a jerk, then what happens? Due to that shocker, the yes, accidents can be prevented because that shockers are increasing the yes time and decreases the momentum. Clear? Next, why car seat belts are used by the driver? Yes, why car seat belt? Because if he is get pushing, pulling, he if he is falling forward or some reason he is applying brake, he will not fall and not get hurt because that seat belt will yes, pull up, decrease the momentum and increases the time because that is a little bit elastic type, right? So it will increase the time and decreases the momentum to zero and the person will not get hurt. Next is why the high jumper is allowed to jump on a sand or a cushioned bed. Cushioned bed. Why? So cushioned bed or sand he will go a little bit inside to decrease its momentum. He will decrease his momentum and will increase the time and if he is jumping on concrete floor, then what happens? He may get hurt. Yes, so that is why he was allowed to fall on, yes, cushion or sand. Sand. Next is, uh, to now what is the main thing? Second law, what you have to, main thing which you have to be in your, uh, keep in your mind while doing these examples to, yes, Decrease the momentum to zero and increases the time. This is the line you should remember. Any example you can able to do. Yes. So suppose this type of question comes for two marks. Why car seat belts are used by a driver? But simply what you will write related to this example, you will write so that he decreases the momentum to zero and increases the time and he may not get hurt. Simple two marks question. Very easy. And this example is for Newton's second law. This is how you will manage with the questions. Right? Numericals already I told you about. Next is, why karate player breaks the tile or brick with a single blow from a height? Now here you will not see say that to decrease the momentum. No. From a height when he is blowing, he increases the momentum. With very high speed he is blowing it and the tile breaks. So he increases the time, he increases the momentum and decreases the time very fast. That is why the time breaks. See, this is just opposite. Now next example is why athlete run for some distance before taking high jump. He's running for some time so that he will gain momentum. He will gain momentum and then with that momentum he will run very fast. Yes, today. So this is how the second law has been explained. And now I'll explain you how the second law contains the first law, which is very, very important. Second law. Now, first law says if it is in the state of rest or of motion, it will not move. But second law is saying if force is applied, then definitely it will move. Yes, today. So second law is very important in concern with the first law. In concern with the first law. If second law is not there, first law is not possible. So second law contains the first law. This is three marks question comes in your exam. How second law contains first law? Let me explain by giving this equation. Clear? Now force is very important in second law. If you are not applying any force, the body will remain in the state of rest and it will be in the state of motion. That the first law is saying. Until or unless some unbalanced force acts on it. Now from where this force comes? This force comes from second law. Suppose if I am saying force which is equal to mass into acceleration. That means it is accelerating anybody. Clear? Now if I say force is equal to zero. No force is applied. Clear? No force is applied on any object. That means first law. Now if f is equal to zero then student m into a will also become zero. Clear? Again, if I say if mass is not equal to zero, but acceleration is zero. See, mass, there is some value for mass, suppose 6 kg, 5 kg. But if I say acceleration is equal to zero, mass is not equal to zero, fine with, but acceleration is zero. But we know that M into A, 
If one is zero, another will automatically become zero. So a is equal to zero, and if I say a is equal to v minus u upon t, that is change of velocity, rate of change of. That if I say instead of acceleration, then also it becomes zero. See, very very important. Two masses there, but the acceleration is zero. Then also we can say that force is zero. If initial velocity is zero, then what happens? Final velocity is, is equal to initial velocity will also become zero. Yes, because if there is no initial, there will be no final. Clear, student? Then what happens? That means if the object is in the rest position, that means zero position, it will not move. If the object is in the state of motion, until only some force applied, it will be in the state of motion. Clear? That means if second law is not there. First law, yes, what happens? It will remain in that particular state. So, second law is very, very important because without first law, the second law is also not possible. If the object is at rest, the second law is not there, then what happens? It will remain in the state of rest. Second law is saying force is applied. When force is applied, we can change the position. So, very, very important. That is why we say that second law contains the first law. Without first law, second law, what it will do if the body is not there? If the body is not rest, body is in motion, then what that force will do if the body is not there? Body has to be there. That is by first law. And if the body is there, second law is changing its position. Clear student, if body is there, it may be in the state of rest, maybe in the state of motion, then only the second law can be applied, that is force can be applied to change its position. So very, very important two months derivation that how the second law, yes, contains the first law. Clear student, this I have discussed today about the second law, momentum, uh, what is the relationship between and the examples and the numerical as usual. Very easy, you will jot down all those formulas and you can able to do it. Now in my next video, I will come, come with law of conservation of momentum and third law. This is the last part, then only the chapter gets over. Clear student? Thank you so much student. Please like, share and subscribe 9th class. God bless you all.